Henry David Thoreau uses a lot of imagery. He has to like put us there. It's not enough for him to tell us he was there. He wants us to be there also. Now, oh yes, this is his style, but this style is not unique to him, especially when writing about nature. Nature writers, they have to put you there. It's not enough that they were there. They want you to be there also. So they're going to use a lot of imagery, language that appeals to the senses. They want you to hear it, smell it, see it, feel it. They want you to experience it, not just read about it. They want you to get lost in it. If you haven't had that experience while reading law, then you haven't read it. You just looked at it. You just looked at it. Because for sure that was, his, that was one of his intentions. He wants you to be there. He wants you to know what it was like to be at Walden then. Because he had a funny feeling that Walden is not going to be the same 100 years from now. So he wanted the people who read this 100 years from now, let me tell you how it was when I was there. And you can see whether or not it's the same now. That's what he wanted. One of the first environmentalists. So if all the trees were cut down, he wants you to know. The trees were there. This is how they looked. This is how they sounded in the wind. This is how they looked in fall time. This is how the snow looked on them when it was winter and it snowed. So forth and so on. So that if you go there now in the winter and it snows and there are no trees, you're like, well, man, what happened to all this? Uh, this, is, this is why he used a whole lot of imagery. And I don't think it was figurative. I think it was all, it was all real. He, was, he wasn't just doing it just to give you a, a figurative image of how Walden was. It probably would have been like that for you if it's not like that today.